I'm Mark Golub. And as election 2016 rolls on, Bernie Sanders has created a bit of a stir in the Jewish community over the senator's comments in which he said that the United States must pursue, quote, a more balanced approach when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and over his criticizing Israel for using, quote, disproportionate force in the 2014 war in Gaza. The OU, the Union of Orthodox Jewish Congregations of America, the nation's leading Orthodox Jewish umbrella organization, has explicitly rejected Senator Sanders' comments and has said that, frankly, they are offended by his criticism of Israel's defensive military response to Hamas. Well, to speak to this issue and others in the current election process, we're pleased to have back on our JBS phones once again Nathan Diamond, the Executive Director for Public Policy at the OU. Nathan, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. All right, Nathan, um, it was interesting that the OU felt it had to make a public statement about this. From your perspective, how would you describe the issue, and what do you feel the OU is trying to say? Uh, the, the, the issue is, uh, and whether or not a candidate, in this case Senator Sanders, um, is is uh, reflecting and articulating uh, an accurate uh, understanding of the challenges that Israel confronts, and uh, based on based on his uh, comments, uh, we think that. Uh, um, you know, it was inaccurate, to say the least, and we were very troubled by uh, his assertion about Israel acting in a disproportionate manner when it's um, battling against Hamas terrorists, uh, and, and we felt it was important to communicate very clearly to Senator Sanders and, and to those who are thinking about whether or not they should vote for him in the Democratic primary um, what... Uh, what uh, at least uh, our our organization feels about what he said. Mm -hmm. Nathan, to what extent do you feel that this is any different than what the Obama administration said during the 2014 Gaza war? Well, I think uh, whatever uh, the Obama administration said um, during the war, it was also in the context of the Obama administration uh, taking concrete steps to support Israel in its uh, in its defensive war against Hamas, uh, both in terms of providing uh, funds and and um, military hardware, uh, certainly for the defensive uh, um, things such as Iron Dome, um, and so even it, you know we were not we were not happy. Um, when there were some expressions of concern during the war coming out of the White House uh, then. But again, it was in a, first of all, I think they were expressed in a different way. Uh, and second of all, it was in a context of um, materially aiding Israel in the effort. By the way, I agree with you 100% that the Obama administration was, in fact, helping Israel do, during the 2014 Gaza war. I'm not sure that you're remembering how severe the criticism was, not only by the president, but by the Secretary of State. And I'm wondering whether you're, you're making a distinction right now between Sanders and the Obama administration. Does that suggest that the OU is concerned about Bernie Sanders' overall perspective on U.S. relationship to Israel? For example, do you worry that were he to become president, he would be less helpful to Israel in a similar situation. Well, I'll, I'll just say, let, let me make clear at this point that the OU does not, uh, we're a non-partisan yes, organization. We absolutely. don't endorse candidates for office or explicitly yes. oppose candidates for office. We talk about the issues. Yes. And, uh, you know, what I, what, I, what I can say with regard to Senator Sanders is that uh, both with regard to this issue and also with regard to how he said... Um, you know, that, that the United States needs to undertake a more, quote-unquote, even-handed approach um, between Israel and the Palestinians, um, you know, is, uh, is, is, is a notion where he's expressing, um, uh, you know, if not, at best, a moral equivalency 
Yes. Which uh, which which we just don't see. Yes. Um, and which we would disagree with. And look, Senator Sanders has, I think, publicly said that uh, to the degree that he's been advised uh, with regard to Israel policy issues, he's been advised by people who are in the leadership of J Street. Um, he obviously uh, declined to come to the APAC policy conference and express his views to the APAC uh, national uh, leadership and membership. Um, so it's pretty clear where Senator Sanders is pitching his tent. Um, and uh, on, the, on these issues, it's, he seems to be pitching it in a different tent than certainly from where most OU uh, members are. Okay. By the way, I apologize to you, Nathan, and to the OU because I should have said in my opening that the OU does not endorse any candidate. And my discussion with you today is not about whom do you support. What I am trying to make sure you have a chance to explain, what I want the audience to understand, is that the OU is concerned about certain issues mm -hmm. which have surfaced in this, both the right. Republican as well as the Democratic uh, primary. And, and I should say, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not a partisan uh, exactly. Divide. I, I, uh, you know, I, I, it's worth it's worth pointing out that Senator Clinton, uh, or former Secretary Clinton, um, who's who's running against Senator Sanders for the Democratic nomination, uh, also criticized Senator Sanders for these statements and distinct, you know, contrasted herself with him. So, it's not it's not Republican versus Democrat per se. There's a division here between the two candidates that are competing for the Democratic nomination. Yes, and again, I appreciate that clarification. I hope everybody's got it. We're not discussing whom does the OU endorse. We are talking about the OU's concern about what the candidate stand is on U.S.-Israeli relationship and how, they, how each candidate views the state of Israel. Um, my initial point to you was that I feel that Bernie Sanders is representing a philosophy, a larger philosophy in the Democratic Party, which has moved to the left on Israel, and that although I can certainly understand why the OU is, to use, your, use the OU's word, offended by the Bernie Sanders perspective, I don't think it's any significantly different than the Obama administration, unless, Nathan, you, the OU is concerned that Bernie Sanders goes beyond these statements and that while he says certain things, the Obama administration has also said, your concern is that were he to become president, he has indicated, whether it's through his alignment with J Street, which the Obama administration welcomed to the White House, that he has done something to suggest to you that he would be different in policy than the Obama administration has been in the last eight years. And that's why I'm pushing you on whether you think there is a distinction between Sanders and Obama. So, so, it's not right, one so, that I see. I, uh, right. So, again, I, I, I think um, I, I'll, I'll try to respond to your question this way, Mark. Um, yeah, the, the, the Obama administration has, has, has made statements that, that people in the pro-Israel community find troubling. But the Obama administration has also, because it's been in office, has taken concrete steps and actions that have been supportive of Israel. But why um, couldn't Bernie and, Sanders and, say and, the and, same thing to you? Why? No, no, so let me, let me, let me, let me just finish sure, my point. Sure. In the case of Senator Sanders, uh, all we have to go on at the moment um, are his statements, right? Because he's not president of the United States, and even as a senator, um, <laughs> you know, his, his area of involvement wasn't really foreign policy in Israel. Um, so, so that, so that uh, you know, without getting into, um, you know, sort of a scorecard of, of, of him versus the Obama administration per se, um, I'll, just, I'll, I'll say that because all we have to go on with Senator Sanders at this moment are his statements, um, that, 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 makes it, that makes it more worrisome. Okay. Now, again, I'm saying this just so that everybody is clear. I'm not asking you whether the OU endorses a different candidate. I am mm -hmm. asking whether the OU has looked at the policy positions of Hillary Clinton. And at the moment, we have three contenders for the Republican nomination, Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, and John Kasich. 
Has the OU looked at the positions all four of these other candidates are taking? And if so, I want to take them one by one with you, beginning with Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we, we, we obviously follow these things very closely and, and do um, look at the, the positions and the records that each of these candidates and, and other officials in government um, articulate, and, and, and then also importantly what they do. Um, so, so with regard to Hillary Clinton, you know, I would just say her, her most recent, apart from her response to Senator Sanders' comments, right, her most recent, uh, you know, comprehensive statements with regard to her attitudes towards Israel and what her policies towards Israel would be would be indeed her speech at APEC. Um, and in that speech at APEC, um, she, um, she drew uh, two important contrasts between herself and the Obama administration, in which she served, obviously, as Secretary of State. One was, um, and, and you'll forgive me if this is not an exact quote, but because uh, I don't have her speech in front of me, but she said um, she, she, if she were president, she would ensure that Israel's enemies do not perceive any wedge between the United States and Israel. Um, and I think in her saying that, she was trying to con- say, you know, she appreciates that there's been some difficulties, some very visible difficulties in the relationship between Israel and the Obama administration, and she wants to repair that. Um, she also very clearly stated, explicitly stated, that she would oppose efforts um, to push a U.N. Security Council resolution that would try to uh, somehow impose um, uh, a, a, uh, a, a two-state solution between Israel and the Palestinians. And the Obama administration has been silent to date on whether they will uh, support or abstain or, 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 or veto such a U.N. Security Council resolution. Um, now, she also said, Ms. Clinton also said that she, you know, she supported the Iran nuclear deal. She thought it was a good deal, although she thinks it needs to be vigorously enforced, and that she promised that she would enforce it uh, very strongly. So that's what she said. Um, and then the other thing that we can look at with regard to Senator, Se- Secretary Clinton is her time in office as senator from New York, where she had a very um, solid uh, pro-Israel voting record. Okay. Um, and um, so she has a record there, and she's made some very clear statements. Okay. By the way, do you know what Bernie Sanders' voting record is on Israel-related issues? Um, it's uh, not great. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least as measured, uh, I, you know, you should, pe- folks should look up or speak to the folks at APAC. They they track all these okay. votes, and I would say that, you know, they you, if you if you use if you're using APAC's benchmarks, um, Senator Sanders does not have the voting record that Senator Clinton okay. uh, had. Before we move to the Republicans, I want to tell you what I'm hearing, Nathan, and you can tell me whether this is anything that you have heard as well, or whether there's a you know, sort of a different perspective in different parts of the Jewish community. I hear people who are very disappointed in Bernie Sanders feel that when it comes to foreign policy, he is thin. Incidentally, I am just like the OU. I am not endorsing or criticizing any candidate. What I am trying to do for the audience, Nathan, is simply present the arguments I'm hearing all the time. What I'm hearing people who sort of at first liked Bernie Sanders, and there was a lot, a lot he said that resonated with uh, many Jews. There's a feeling that he is thin on foreign policy and that he is, as you say, he has not had a strong record when it comes to the state of Israel. But I also hear many Jews saying they are enormously disappointed in Hillary Clinton and that what we see in the general polls about her, that she is a very, she is a very low trust factor, there are many American Jews I talk to who are saying to me they don't trust her. And when you talk about the APAC speech as if that is, again, some way definitive for her policy positions, and I'm going to want to hear whether you say the same thing about Donald Trump's APAC speech, one of the things that seems to bother many Democrats is that there was a time during the last, uh, during her time as Secretary of State when she went after Benjamin Netanyahu viciously on the phone and was very critical of him 
for settlement policy and housing policy, and that while overall, especially her husband seems to have been very pro-Israel, there is concern I hear, Nathan, about whether what she's saying now is just political rhetoric that is meaning to, you know, sort of play to the APAC crowd, but that her overall position is much closer to the Obama position than it would be to the kind of description that you have given of her. So I want any comment you have on how American Jewry is feeling right now about Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. Well, I'll just, I'll just say I've heard I've I've heard comments from people around the Jewish community in line with everything that you've said. Uh huh. Um, um, the one thing the one thing I would say, and I'm just you know this is just a, 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 a people you know your your audience should take this just as a description, not as not as uh, not anything more than that. You know, when people people should remember that when Hillary Clinton ran for the United States Senate for the first time in 2000 to succeed. Senator Moynihan, um, she was she, there was great distrust of her in the Jewish community in the pro-Israel community. She was the one that had famously kissed Suha Arafat, and people after Suha Arafat, you know, basically uh, gave an anti-Semitic tirade in front of her. Um, and and Hillary Clinton campaigned, and she um, she succeeded in becoming elected senator, um, and. I don't know, I think, any better than most other people what Hillary Clinton believes in her heart. But what, what you could document is that while she served in the United States Senate, um, she, was, she was a very solid advocate for Israel and for a strong U.S.-Israel relationship. Um, All right. So she has that record. All right. Um, and what about the phone and then, call? From and, then, and, then she has a, and then next to that, she has a record serving as President Obama's Secretary of State. Yes. Uh, and during that time, she was involved in, in, in carrying out, you know, the president's policy with regard to the peace process, carrying out the president's policy in terms of getting the Iran deal started. Um, so that's something that voters have to judge also. I, I don't think they should judge, this is just my opinion, I don't think they should judge her record as Secretary of State, and not also look at her record as Senator when she was, you know, because that's equally her record. And and then they're going to have to make an assessment of, you know, what do they think is important, and what do they think, what parts of the record are do they find more compelling, and and what do they and what are they prepared to believe in terms of what she says? Okay, you say it very very well. So now we'll look at the Republicans for a moment. Again, when I hear people speak. In the Jewish community, what I hear more and more often is that clearly the best person in the race on Israeli issues, U.S.-Israeli relationship, is Ted Cruz. And a lot of people, you know, made a big deal of the fact that Donald Trump's initial comments on Israel were that if he, he while he was committed to Israel and pro-Israel, that what he believed he should do were he to be president would be to come in as even-handed as possible in any negotiations. And he famously said he did not believe there was any negotiations on earth more difficult than the right. Israeli-Palestinian and how proud he would be. And he wanted a shot at being able to somehow effectuate a compromise between the two, but that he felt the president of the United States had to enter negotiations seeming to be as neutral as possible. So I want to hear what, first of all, what have you heard about Jewish reaction to Cruz and Trump? We'll get to Kasich later. And does the OU, has the OU taken any position on anything either Donald Trump has said or Ted Cruz has said? Um. Well, again, I, my, you know, my, my answer here is similar to, on the Republican side, is similar to what I just said on the Democratic side, which is um, I think it's important, again, to, to a starting point for people, sh you know, should be the speeches that Trump, Cruz, and Kasich all delivered at APAC because, you know, the, they know when candidates go, you know, when they're running for president in front of a group like APAC with 20,000 people there and a, and a national audience beyond that, and they know this is going to be viewed as their 
definitive statement with regard to Israel, they take it very seriously. Yes. So it's worth looking at in a very serious way. Um, what 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 Ted Cruz has, in addition, um, which Donald Trump does not have, because Donald Trump, as he often says, was not a politician until just a few months ago. Ted Cruz has a record, um, and and he has a record of introducing legislation and of proposing resolutions and doing various other things while he's been in the United States Senate um, to be a very uh, avid and strong advocate for Israel. Um, and he fought the Iran nuclear deal very fiercely and, and a whole range of other things. So in, with regard to Ted Cruz, you have things that he's saying now as a presidential candidate, and they, and they match up with what he did um, as a U.S. senator. John Kasich also, um, you know, not so much as governor of Ohio, because it's less relevant, foreign policy is less relevant, but when John Kasich was in the House of Representatives, which he was for many years, you know, he has a voting record with regard to Israel. That's and it's a pretty right. good voting record. That's right. Um, Donald Trump um, does not have a voting record uh, because he wasn't in politics. So, right. you know, you, so, so there voters have to, um, you know, voters, voters have to, to some degree, if they want to, you know, if Israel is important to them and they're assessing Donald Trump, they, they, then they have more of a challenge just in that, you're, you, as you said. At the outset, he said, I want to be neutral toward Israel. And then when he came to AIPAC, um, if you look at the substance of Donald Trump's speech, his speech in terms of the substantive content of it was, was very, very similar to what Ted Cruz and John Kasich said mm-hmm. um, on, our, on the range of issues. So uh, you know, voters will have to make an assessment of um, what is Donald Trump saying and do we think? Do they think they can believe him um, when he doesn't have a record? He, there's no reason why he should have a record because he was not a senator. He was not something else. So, but that's the challenge. Very well said again. So, Nathan, I want you to address a subtlety that often is not addressed in the Jewish community. We've been talking about the candidate stand on Israel as if that's the only issue which moves Jews towards or against a given candidate. There are also domestic issues. And the the OU has a specific interest in, for example, the makeup of a Supreme Court and how courts in our country deal with the issue of, for example, the funding of day school education. How do you see the two areas of Jewish concern? On the one hand, Israel, and on the other hand, the way in which Judaism and religion is dealt with in America, and the domestic scene, and the makeup of the Supreme Court, and obviously the next president of the United States, will have enormous influence in the shaping of the Supreme Court, maybe for decades. How do you balance and you know, what would you say to American Jews who are listening to you right now all over the country? How, do you, how does the OU, what, do you, what advice do you have to Jews, how you balance the two concerns, Israel on the one hand and domestic concerns on the other? Great. Right. So um, th- that's a very important question. And, uh, you know, people, people, uh, individual American voters rank and prioritize what they find more compelling and a little bit less compelling. You know, that's, that's how they go around uh, and decide who to vote for. Yes. You know, someone said if you want to find somebody to vote for that agrees with you 100% of the time, the only place you're going to find that is when you look in the mirror. Yes. And even then you're not necessarily so sure. Yes. Uh, but, but, you know, a, a, any, any, any candidate for office that someone's going to vote for, they're, they're, gonna have, they're not going to agree with them 100% of the time, and so it's a matter of prioritizing. Um, you know, I think we're, we're at a moment where, with regard to the state of Israel, uh, for those Jews who care about the state of Israel, um, there are literally life and death issues confronting the state of Israel um, in terms of, again, an Iranian regime that has not been at all uh, 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 cagey or, or, uh, or uh, equivocating in the notion that it wants to obtain nuclear weapons and 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 destroy Israel, mm-hmm. um, and 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 ISIS, 
um, and others around the Middle East also want to bring great, you know, real mortal harm upon Israel and her citizens. So um, I think people should consider, you know, uh, other issues are really critical. Religious freedom in, this, in the United States is critical. Um, the viability of Jewish day school education is critical. Um, but none of the issues that we're confronting domestically in the United States are literally life and death issues. Um, so I think that argues for putting um, – and, and, and Israel needs um, – um, a strong relationship with the United States and a strong and supportive U.S. president to be able to confront and overcome those challenges um, the best way possible. Not to say Israel couldn't do it without the United States, but it's sure a heck of a lot easier. So I think I think for those reasons, the an assessment of which president will be the best for the U.S.-Israel relationship um, ranks high, and it also relates, by the way, as an American voter, to keeping Americans safe. Mm-hmm. Um, there, while, while Israel is on the front lines um, in, 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 in the confrontation with Iran and global terrorism, um, those lines are drawing closer. Um, you know, Brussels and Paris are thousands of miles closer to the United States than the Middle East. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and 9-11, obviously, uh, 2001 happened on, on our own shore. So um, there, it's not just about keeping Israelis alive, it's about keeping Americans alive. So, so that would seem to me to be a very strong argument for ranking that the highest. Um, but the other issues are critical as well, and, and um, it's important to look at the candidates in terms of their records and, and their defense of religious freedom and, and parental choice in education and supporting strong uh, families and strong faith communities. And, and again, all of these candidates have records on, on those issues, um, or have spoken to those issues, and that's what the voters should look at. Nathan, you're doing wonderful work at the OU. You're a fabulous spokesperson, not simply for the Orthodox movement, but you're a real voice of reason in the Jewish world. And I always appreciate your letting me call you and, and having you, you know, share your ideas on JBS. I wish you all the best, and we'll continue to talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I'll, I'll be happy to visit with you in New York sometime. I would love it, Nathan. We'll schedule it right away. You be well. Thank you. Nathan Diamond, the Executive Director for Public Policy at the OU, the Union of Orthodox Jewish Congregations of America, speaking about how the OU right now views the Jewish community's dealings with all of the candidates running for president today. My thanks, as always, to our director, Sloan Copeland, production coordinator, Serge Goldberg, to Dara Golub, the Associate Director of JBS, and to the producers of this edition of Election 2016, Jan Weiss and Carol Lilienthal. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends.